Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to take a look at the LG Spectrum on Verizon. It's their latest LTE 4G high-end Android phone, and it runs Android OS 2.3 Gingerbread, but it will get an update to Ice Cream Sandwich, and it has a big 4.5-inch 720p display. So this is the LG Spectrum. It's available now on Verizon Wireless for $199, so it's nice that Finally, their higher-end LTE phones are coming down in price. It's not going to start out at $299 the way several other phones have. There's also the third phone with a 720p display. So that's 720 by 1280 pixels, which means a lot of pixel density on this 4.5-inch display. It's, it's certainly a colorful display. It's very sharp. It's great for reading ebooks. It does have glare, however, typical of most smartphones. It's a pretty shiny display. And outdoors, it's a little hard to see unless you set brightness to absolute maximum, even on a partly cloudy day. So, Though it's a large phone, it only weighs 4.99 ounces. We'll call it 5 ounces, so it's not terribly heavy. And you can see, relatively speaking, it's very tall versus the width of the phone. And it looks a lot, in terms of form factor, like the LG Nitro on AT&T. And in fact, this is basically Verizon's version of the LG Nitro that we reviewed a couple of months ago. It came out for AT&T with LTE on their network. You can see that it's got three buttons here rather than the usual four Android buttons, and it's getting ready for Ice Cream Sandwich there. It does run Gingerbread right now. It will get an upgrade to Ice Cream Sandwich, and Ice Cream Sandwich devices go with the three buttons instead, so hence that's probably why. Here we have the Home button, your Back button, and this that takes care of pretty much everything else. It's basically your Menu button. You can get the Settings, your Wallpaper, Themes, Notifications and search. So it's loaded basically the menu and the search button together currently under Gingerbread. Now by default this ships with a feature that turns off the backlight of the buttons whenever you touch the display, which is kind of silly because you can't really see these too well in the dark except for the home button. So many of us do touch the display to wake it up so we can see the buttons. So you can turn that option back on. Now we take a look around the device. Bottom here, this is where you yank off the back in this little groove here. Nothing else going on. On this side we have the volume rockers, pretty subtle, to, but they're usable enough. Up top we have the micro USB port under a door, 3.5 millimeter stereo jack, your microphone hole, power button, nothing going on on this side. And the back, well it's kind of nice, I, I actually like these glossy pattern finish backs. And that's exactly what it has. It does show fingerprints, you can see I just cleaned it and it's already getting a little bit dirty, but it looks kind of nice in a modern, masculine, industrial way. It's your speaker grill right here, and your 8 megapixel camera with the LED flash. Phone also has a 1.3 megapixel video chat camera up front. And by the way, that rear camera takes pretty nice shots. LG makes a nice camera. Pretty good exposure and color saturation there. And it can shoot 1080p video. If we take a look at the software on the device, you can see that they've customized the home screen. We've got their usual combo widget here. It's got the time, it's got the weather, and you can manually update by tapping the update button over here. And you can have multiple cities. You can see I have arrows up here so you can actually go through and see different cities. And they've got their little customized launcher strip down here. And if you want to see all apps, it's the typical LG thing. It's got the app drawer. Now I actually like this because I install a lot of apps, so it's a way that you can organize things into different groups. You can delete any of these you don't want. You can create new ones and you can hide them so you don't want to use something too much. Just compress it down. So, not too bad. The penalty that we pay for this LG UI on top of the phone is that it does sometimes slow it down and make it a little bit bulky once in a while. Thankfully, it has a Qualcomm Snapdragon dual core CPU running at 1.5 GHz, so it's got plenty of processing power. It comes with a 16 gig micro SD card, and there's about 1.5 gigs of available internal storage. So, like the Nitro, it doesn't have lots of internal storage available, but that's certainly adequate enough. And with today's high capacity micro SD cards being available fairly cheap, I'm not too concerned about that. In terms of software here, you've got all your standard Google applications, voice dialer on here as well, contacts, standard phone UI. In the Verizon Wireless Group, you can see we've got all their stuff in it, their own little hole together. So those of you who don't like bundled software will be happy. You can even tap on that and minimize it and not have to see it. But there are some useful things here. You've got BitBop, which is their version of streaming TV. It costs $10 a month, and we'll show you that. The usual Blockbuster bundle. Kindle's on here. Let's Golf too. It seems like every Verizon phone gets that one. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. 
their Vcast Media Manager, their App Store, VZ Navigator is here as well, and of course Google Maps and Navigation are also on board, and they've got Rhapsody on here. Media is your standard Google applications, plus LG has their own video player on board, and their Smart Share, which is wireless DLNA. Under Tools we have all the usual, well, utilities like the calculator, all that kind of thing. You can move these around, by the way. Like, if you don't think Maps belongs in Tools, you can move it. The same way with Navigation. Polaris Office is on board, and this is the full version, so you can actually view, edit, and create Word, Excel, and PowerPoint documents. So that's nice to have the full version on board. Got the usual YouTube player, we've got Adobe Flash, and anything you download gets put in the downloads, as does the Android Market icon. Another little bit of UI customization is you've got the drop-down controls for your speaker, orientation lock, Bluetooth, GPS, and flight mode, and this is your Wi-Fi on-off right here, but it just takes you to the settings screens as a shortcut. I kind of prefer the way Samsung does it, where you just drop down, you can turn Wi-Fi on and off. In terms of benchmarks, the LG Spectrum does decently middle of the pack for a faster Android phone, but it's not exceptional, which is interesting because battery life, sort of like the Nitro, is not a strong point of this phone. It, it, Verizon LTE phones generally have impaired battery life, honestly, when you're on LTE or if you're switching back and forth a lot. But this guy really isn't pushing the processor as far as we can tell. The Quadrant score is 2480, which is not bad, but not exceptional. Linpack is 65, on Tutu is 5838, and Sunspider was 2432. So decent numbers, but not, wow, really super duper fast. Speaking of LTE, you can see we have two bars right now. Well, that's a little bit optimistic. Uh, Verizon assigns a surprising number of bars sometimes to a signal. We'll take a look at what our actual signal is here. And you can see that two bars is equaling negative 114 dB of signal, which is not a very good signal. And there's our 1x signal strength. I do like that you get information for both. 1x is what you're going to use for calls, so it's also handy to know how good your voice signal is. We took to the phone to a better LTE signal area where we had a negative 84 dB, and that's a pretty good signal. And you can see our history here. So those are very respectable download and upload speeds. Anywhere from... 15.6 to 21.2 megabits down and between 9.9 .9 and 14 for uploads. That's pretty good speeds. Voice quality on the phone with a good signal is it's average. It's not super impressive. It sounds a little bit fuzzy incoming and outgoing. Nothing too atrocious uh, and not so different from many of Verizon's other phones, but it's not up to, say, the Motorola Droid Razor or the Motorola Droid 3, which has some of the best voice quality we've heard on Verizon. But it's certainly adequate and you, you don't sound like you're underwater or anything like that. And you can see the phone dialer screen here, pretty much standard stuff. There is no shortcut to favorites here, which is a little strange, but that is what it is. Now I'll take a look at the web browser, but first I want to mention one thing. Though you do get the Google search on the home screen, uh, if you're using the browser and you just type your search term into the URL bar, instead of using Google, you see, aha, uh -huh, it's using bing.com for search. So Verizon's still sneaking some Bing love in there on their Android phones. Now again, if you go back out to the desktop, we have our good old Google search widget there. So you're, you're not locked out of Google completely. And while we're in the browser, I'll also show you the keyboard. This is the LG keyboard here. Uh, you don't have the alternate press for things like numbers, which is kind of a bummer, but I have to say this is one of the nicest, most accurate keyboards. It's, it's, it's like the iPhone and Windows phones in terms of it just kind of really gets every press right, which is nice. Phone also, of course, has the standard Android keyboard and swipe if you'd rather use those. And now I'll load our own site. Again, over LTE 4G with a pretty weak signal. And you can see really sharp, nice screen, and deep colors, too. Pinch zooming is reasonably responsive. It's still finishing loading some stuff on the page, and it's still handling that just fine. And now we'll do our usual Adobe Flash test. That is a very vivid blue it's showing. It's a little bit more saturated than uh, you'd see on a computer. Nice colors. And we've got two flash videos on this page. So pick, pick one of them. It's 
still streaming over LTE. Hopefully. So here we have a gaming demo video playing, full screen. Controls are a little bit hard to manage. I'm surprised given the fast CPU, but for things like choosing full screen playback and all that, but it works. And you can hear the speaker now. This is a pretty loud video, and we are on maximum volume. So it looks good, and again, nice screen. Now that we looked at Adobe Flash playback with its slightly painful controls but good streaming, we're going to take a look at BitPop, which is Verizon's streaming TV service, 10 bucks a month. Funny they haven't resized that to full the full resolution of the screen, but that really doesn't matter. Once we get into the application, it will use the entire screen. So now we're in BitPop, and you can see this is uh, the UI here. You can look at new things at your queue. You can browse for stuff, and we're just going to pick something off the front here episode of Prime Suspect. And you have the option to watch now or download it to watch it later. Which is kind of handy if you're on the airplane and you're forced to be in flight mode, you can download it. But it does check for license first, so you're going to have to start playback before you turn off your wireless. And we are doing this over Wi-Fi now since our LTE signal is not that strong. Looks really great. Again, the screen really shines when you're watching video. Speaker is reasonably good. Lip sync sometimes a little bit behind. So there's streaming TV on Bitbop. And then we're going to take a look at some more multimedia, but first, here's a pretty neat widget that LG has for multimedia stuff. You've got quick access to your music, playlists by artists, photos, videos, and they've got some pretty good trailers preloaded on this device, too. But first, we're going to take a look at photos for a minute. And they've got a bunch of stock photos on there. So this has LG's gesture control, and you can do things like tap it to advance to the next picture. And that works, as you can see, in both orientations, which is nice. And now we'll check out some video playback. And now we're checking out a 1080p MPEG-4 trailer that's playing from internal storage. Looking very good. By the way, this works with uh, the optional MHL adapter, they tend to sell for about 20 bucks or so. It's a little dongle you plug into the micro USB port, and then you plug your HDMI cable into that and your charger so you can use an HDTV or monitor with this if you like. Anyway, playing beautifully, looking nice. So now, given the high resolution display, we're going to check out Google Books. So you can see how it looks, and it's downloading the book over the net. And text is really nice and sharp and clear. Good contrast, too. Fast enough page turns. And we can adjust our font size so you can see a little bit bigger. It starts out pretty darn small, so you got to go a lot of pluses if you want to see it much bigger. But there we have fairly large text now. So definitely pleasant for ebook reading. And again, it comes with Kindle preloaded. Of course, you can put Nook on here or the ebook reader of your choice. The LG ships with a fairly bulky charger. It's the kind that sticks out on both sides of the prongs there. So it's going to take up a couple of spots on your power strip unless your outlets are oriented so you can put the thing up and down instead of sideways. That's a little bit annoying. One neat thing, though, is that when you plug this charger in, the desktop actually changes. We're going to show you that now. So get ready for an ASUS moment here. For those of you who've used the ASUS Transformer, you, you'll know what I'm talking about when you see this. Switches to that, and then it switches to the water level to show you how much charge it has. So right now we're about 50% charge, we're about half full in the water, and it uses 
The accelerometer? No, not like the ASUS in that respect. But that's what it does, and it's a pretty boisterous animation there. And when you unplug it, it goes back to your standard desktop. So that's the LG Spectrum. It's available now. 4.5 inch 720p display, dual cores, 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon CPU, and LTE on Verizon Wireless as a mobile hotspot feature as well, and the usual Wi Fi, Bluetooth, and a GPS. And it's not a bad phone. For, for those of you who have been trying out some of uh, Verizon's other 720p phones, if they haven't been to your liking, this is definitely worth a look. My only caveat is LG's custom software in here does seem to occasionally cause a little bit of micro lag and a little bit of quackiness in terms of behavior. It doesn't crash or anything like that, but sometimes just gets a little bit sluggish, has to think about things, that sort of stuff. And we also would have liked them to do some, a little bit more with their UI touches. We, we love this multimedia widget here this wheel on the side that lets you move through your multimedia. That's nice stuff. We like this widget right here, but gee, they could have added some things for brightness up here or for better Wi-Fi management. But all in all, it's not a bad phone. Super sharp display, decent voice quality, and it behaves well in terms of going between 3G and 4G. It doesn't waffle a lot and kill the battery, which is a good thing. Battery life, just so-so on this, by the way. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review of the LG Spectrum, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.